Remember how I've been saying over and over again, it's a ratio, right? It's a ratio between these two things, an arc and a radius, an arc and a radius. Can we work out, just quickly, come back to this question. Can you work out for me what is the actual arc length? I'm now, now I'm curious. I, I didn't care what it was before, but now I would like the actual number. Can someone tell it to me? Just estimating. I'm guessing something like... Yeah, under 20. 18.3? Yeah. Okay, now, the reason why I draw this out now is because I know what the arc length is now, 18.3 centimetres. And I know what the radius is, 7 centimetres. So if I were interested in the size of this angle in radians, then in this particular example, I would say 18.3 centimetres over 7 centimetres. Now, this is a bit awkward. We usually don't give a rip about units all that much because we like kind of like, oh, I know what units you're dealing with. It's centimetres. It's not metres or kilometres or anything like that. But if I write the angle in this way, the units are kind of a big deal. Because do you notice, just like all other units, if you multiply by a unit, as I'm doing on the numerator, and you divide by a unit, as I'm doing on the denominator, right? these units should cancel, should they not? Like that? Does that make sense? And there could be kilometers and kilometers, it'd still cancel, or meters and meters, still cancel, right? What this means is, this is actually the, the genius thing about it, this way of measuring angles, this radians idea, right? Even though I catch it in the terms of, oh, we need a new unit, guys. Degrees aren't good enough. We need a new like symbol to put on there. Radians are, in fact, not a unit at all. Do you see that? Like, they're a ratio between two numbers. I can say, okay, two to one. That's a ratio. It doesn't have units on it. It's not about centimeters or whiteboard markers or donuts or whatever it is, right? Two to one is a ratio that is the same no matter what units you're looking at. Um, it is, in, in fact, a unitless way of measuring things. Okay? So that is why, from now on, I'm actually going to stop writing pi radians. Like, see here when I wrote pi on 2 and pi and 2 pi, you're like, oh, why didn't you put the symbol there? There is a symbol, by the way. It looks like this. It's kind of like a C. It's actually an arc. Can you see why it's an arc? Uh, but no one ever uses it, partly because it looks like a C, and because you don't really need to. It's not a unit. Radians are, in fact, the absence of units. They're a ratio. They're aware of comparing this length and that length. Okay. So, um, I developed. I developed this guy here. This is the. Um, this one here. This is the formula for arc length. Okay. Arc length. The other problem we were encountering was this guy, right? This guy here. This is about a sector area, right? A sector area. How would we go about calculating the size of this if we were talking in radians? Hmm. So I'm going to start with this. What is the um, what is the full area of this circle? It's pi r squared, right? Oh, sorry. Pi r squared. That's the full area. Now I know that the angle attached to the entire circle is two pi. Do you agree with that? Like two pi is that full revolution. Okay. 2 pi isn't in my if, uh, area formula, is it, right? Except it is, it's kind of hiding there, right? Let me try and make it a little more obvious. And um, if you think back to all the work you've been doing on integration, we do this kind of thing all the time. You're like, I don't have 2 pi there. No problem. I'll just stick a half out the front. And there's my 2 pi. Is that okay? You see, now 2 pi is there, okay? So if I didn't want 2 pi, if I wanted a different angle, Right? Like a different proportion of the circle. How do I do this? What if I wanted just like half of the circle instead of the entire thing? What angle would I substitute in here? And the answer is I'll, instead of 2 pi, which takes me all the way around, I'm going to substitute in pi, which is just halfway around. Right? So I would say the area of a semicircle is equal to half times whatever that angle is, pi, times r squared. Right? Which of course is half pi r squared, which you knew already, right? But now I can pick any angle I like. I don't just have to put in 2 pi or pi. I can put in, well, what happens if I put in 1? Like we looked at that before, right? What will the area of that kind of thing be, right? That area will be, I'll call that area, is going to be half times, what's the angle? It's 1, right? R squared. It's half. R squared, whatever that looks like. There you go. Okay. 
Now I can generalize this, right? Just like this is generalized. This is the arc length. If I want a different angle, like instead of 1 or pi or 2 pi, in that spot there in the brackets, all I do is I supply the angle. And that will give me the area of a sector. The area of a sector, and we just write it in a, a slightly rearranged way just so it sounds nicer, is half r squared times whatever angle you want, right? Whether it's 2 pi or pi or 1 or a quarter or whatever you like. Okay. Half r squared theta just kind of rolls off the top. Okay. 